welcome to the latest TTT episode where we'll be talking about test automation. Automation. This word never loses the buzz around it. But there are many questions surrounding it. Is it improving the system? Where does it fit in the SDLC or the STLC process? How much time and effort should we spend on it? Is our framework robust enough to handle new changes or development in the application? Is our team equipped with the tools knowledge to create better automated test cases? Can we show clients their ROI on automation in terms of time and money? Once we have automated tests, do we need manual testing efforts? Do we have the right set of people to review these automated tests? As you may have noticed, these questions are mostly asked by stakeholders. Whereas, if you want to start automation as a practice, the team selected will have different set of questions altogether. Their concerns will mostly be around the training and time that will be allotted to complete automation activities while completing their daily tasks and deliverables. With so many questions and uncertainties, are we setting up automation to fail? So how do we create a system that removes ambiguities from the system and gives every member involved the outcome they are looking for? Who should be looking at the test results? Should it be the end stakeholders? Developers. They should be looking at these test results. Once a test case fails, any further automated test development should stop. Developers or team leads should create tasks of the failing test cases and work on first fixing the feature that is failing. So coming to the next question about test data. How is the test data being created? Who is responsible for it? Should test data creation be a dependency-based activity? Test data creation primarily needs to be an independent entity. Reason being, not one system ever consumes it. Everybody included in the SDLC process uses it. Developers should use it to verify unit test cases if they are already not doing it. Test teams need to use similar data for manual test executions. BAs should be using it to complete their application reviews. So, who should be doing it? With all the teams across the SDLC spectrum using it, creating dependency may not be the right way to go. Creating an automation suite that will not be dependent on anyone for test data is an ideal solution here. With the script creating data, it will also be readily available for all the other members to use it. And the automated scripts will be running on actually used data, not just dummy information. With all members using the same test data, the updated and accurate use of data will be more widespread practice rather than updating it once in a while. One way to do it is to use tools that will help data creation that closely resembles your production data and integrating these tools into your automation suite. ROI or return on investment. Let's talk about that. How can anyone determine if they're getting an ROI in regards to time or money that has been invested in creating an automation framework? Like with a weighing scale, it's a tool, but we cannot justify its use if it's not able to give us the weight of an item. The number or metrics of an automation test we see is the ROI for it. With automation framework and test, the result, time taken to run the test, functionality coverage, reusability of automated components can be considered the ROI. When a project stakeholder is able to get maximum information about the system with minimum interaction and documentation is when an automation framework proves useful and can justify its creation. Your tests need to be fast during execution so that the feedback time is less, hence enabling faster defect resolutions, if any. Test environment, let's talk about that. When we create automation suites or tests, running them on production is not a possibility. Or running it in QA environment is not sensible. So an environment that resembles the production environment but provides flexibility as a QA environment is needed. How do you do that? Ability to control change in the environment that is being used to execute the test is important. Your test environment should let you be flexible to make incremental changes and allow developers identify the root cause of issues easily. So we spoke a lot in theory, but have we actually done it, you might be wondering. So let me tell you about one of the case studies that we recently had. One of the recent clients we had been working with had a very different automation requirement. This was not a Selenium or web-based functional automation. The client required us to build a performance automation framework with CI-CD pipelines and real-time test monitoring. Anyone that works in performance testing knows that building such framework, especially to automate the performance process, is not a very regular practice. As a result, analysis is the key to performance testing and scripting is just a small part of it. We had to go through a lot of initial design brainstorming process. 
and the key question that we came up with were the same that are listed above. How will result analysis be done and by whom? How will these test results reach teams that will fix the issues? Who is going to set up the test environment and create the testing data? Will building the framework actually benefit the client or are we just adding expensive infrastructure components? We addressed each of the questions by creating a modular design that is independent of each component that was used. To simply explain, our entire focus was on a single component that could fulfill all the client's requirements without being expensive or difficult to maintain. So we chose JMeter, we added Jenkins for CI-CD process and Grafana for real-time monitoring. All of the components were hosted in such a way that one being down would not impact the other component and still results were recorded. The reason we could achieve this was by asking the right questions before we started building the framework and not after the work was done. It's very tempting to start creating something from the get-go as soon as you hear about the requirements. Avoiding that and asking the right questions to build a simple design and then taking it to the next level will help, not only with the creation but also maintenance. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such tech updates and know-hows. If you found our explanation on automation useful, please comment, like or share our video. That's it for this TTT episode. See you next time.